Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Bharati Ophthalmology Tutorials. Today we will continue with the amniotic membrane transplantation. So in this video, I will be covering how we harvest the amniotic membrane and what are the different scenarios where we need amniotic membrane transplantation as well as the specific indications and briefly I will be explaining the relevant procedure. So without much delay, let's begin our video on amniotic membrane transplantation. The first thing is how we harvest the amniotic membrane. The amniotic membrane is obtained from the placenta. So following LSCS, the placenta is obtained and the mother would have been screened for HIV, Hepatitis A, Hepatitis B as well as Hepatitis C, also syphilis, also human T-cell leukemia. And ideally all these tests, at least the HIV and the Hepatitis status has to be repeated after 6 months of obtaining the amniotic membrane. So next moving on to how we can preserve this amniotic membrane. So the amniotic membrane is preserved either by freeze drying or by freezing or hypothermic storage. So these are the three methods of preserving amniotic membrane. Accordingly, we follow some procedures to preserve this amniotic membrane. So in the first procedure, under the laminar fluid, the placenta is cleaned of the blood clots and the sterile Eels BSS solution is used which contains 50 mg per ml of streptomycin, 100 mg per ml of neomycin as well as 3.5 mg per ml of amphotericin B. So the membrane is washed with this solution. Then the amniotic membrane is separated from the chorea. Okay. And this amniotic membrane is placed over a nitrocellulose paper which has the pore size of 0.45 mm. And when we place the amniotic membrane over the nitrocellulose paper, we should make sure that the epithelium is facing up. Then this nitrocellulose paper is cut in to the size of 4 into 4 centimeter and then stored at minus 80 degree centigrade. So how we store it? It is stored in a medium called as Dalbeco's medium which contains the Eagle's media and the glycerol in the ratio of 1 is to 1. So the media that is the Dalbeco's media contains the Eagle's and the glycerol in the ratio of 1 is to 1. So the amniotic membrane is stored in this and then stored at minus 80 degree centigrade. And before transplantation, amniotic membrane is taken out and thawed at room temperature. Then rinse three times at least in the saline before transplantation. This is the first procedure which we use to harvest the amniotic membrane. Going to procedure 2 where the membrane is washed with a physiological solution which is containing phosphate buffered saline. Then the membrane is cut into 5 to 5 cm size. Again washed with the same solution that is PBA solution also called as phosphate buffered saline solution. And then it is transferred into the plastic containers and preserved at minus 80 degree centigrade. In this way, the vials of this amniotic membrane can be stored for 70 days. When you want to use it, again it should be thawed for 10 minutes at room temperature and soaked in normal saline containing gentamicin in the concentration of 3 mg per ml for 3 minutes. So this is the second procedure to store amniotic membrane. Coming to the third procedure, in this procedure the amniotic membrane is not stored, the fresh amniotic membrane after uh, it undergoes the various procedure, it is used for transplantation. Till the step of uh, making cubes of 4 into 4 cm, the steps are similar to the procedure 1 and then the amniotic membrane is stored in a vial with a saline solution and then kept in the refrigerator at 4 degree centigrade. So this can be used only for 24 hours. So what are the advantages of freezing and freeze drying of this amniotic membrane? So it is easy to manipulate surgically, there is least chance of contamination and it is readily available. So now moving on to the different situations where we need amniotic membrane transplantation. Before that, let's see what is ocular surface and what are the important components of the ocular surface. So we need a good limbal stem cells or the conjunctival epithelial cells, a basement membrane substrate and a tear fluid. So all these three mechanisms are important to maintain the ocular surface. So if there is any deficiency of one of these, the ocular surface will be affected. So there are three scenarios where this can happen. Like in the first scenario, the stem cells and the tear film is functioning, but there is absent basement membrane. Like in case of HSV keratitis or persistent epithelial defect, then you need only amniotic membrane transplantation. The second scenario is where the tear film production is normal, but the stem cells are affected and the basement membrane is affected. In that case, you need to go with the limbal stem cell autograft or the allograft along with the amniotic membrane transplantation. So this scenario is seen following your chemical burns or the thermal injuries. Then we have the third scenario where all the components are absent. 
like there is no stem cells there is no basement membrane and even the tear secretion is also hampered as it occurs in case of steven johnson syndrome or ocular cicatricial pemphigus in that case it needs intense dry eye treatment either you can go with a partial tarsoropy or even the serum eye drops usage along with limb and cell transplantation and amniotic membrane and in some severe cases it may need lamellar keratoplasty or the penetrating keratoplasty along with the amniotic membrane transplantation so those were the different scenarios so how we can use the amniotic membrane as i told it can be simple amniotic membrane transplantation or it can be with the limbal stem cell transplantation or amniotic membrane transplantation with lamellar or the penetrating keratoplasty or amniotic membrane transplantation with the cyanoacrylate glue so what is the procedure of amniotic membrane transplantation so we have the affected cornea and the conjunctiva here there can be panus which is formed over the cornea so what we do first is we do peritomy 360 degree peritomy is done and we expose the conjunctiva for 5 to 7 mm around the limbus if there are any abnormal vascularization over the cornea like the superficial or the deep vascularization it is removed if there is superficial vascularization it is removed using cellulose sponge or with wet cell and the tissue forceps if there is any deep vascularization then we will have to do the blunt dissection and remove the abnormal cornea after that the amniotic membrane is peeled from the nitrocellulose paper and being the epithelial side up it is placed in the defective part and then secured with a 10-0 monofilament nylon so this is a simple amniotic membrane transplantation is done now the question is how to identify the epithelial side so the first thing is it is mounted on the nitrocellulose paper in the way that the epithelium is facing up the second is you can mark with the indelible ink or also called a surgical ink or you can just pass the needle through the amniotic membrane so that the sharp end is towards the stroma and the end which is attached to the suture is on the epithelial side the best thing is gently you can scrape with the blunt forceps then you will see strands which is resembling the vitreous and that means that you are scraping on the mesenchymal side okay so if you see a strand of vitreous after you just move the amniotic membrane it means that you are touching the mesenchymal side or also called as mesenchymal side or the stromal side okay this is how you will identify which side is facing up now moving on to the indications for amniotic membrane transplantation the most common indications are for the simple amniotic membrane transplantation like persistent epithelial defect during entropian surgery in case of non healing corneal ulcer bullous keratopathy following removal of the band shaped keratopathy in case of post phototherapeutic keratectomy and to cover the base sclera following the pterygium surgery following the removal of the large limbal tumor or even following the semblepheron release so let's briefly see how we do this procedure in these different situations so the first is the persistent epithelial defect the aseptic precautions debride the cornea and then place the amniotic membrane covering the whole of the cornea then we can place a bcl with antibiotic and steroid drops how you do following pterygium surgery this i will be discussing in the next video where i will be sharing a video of pterygium surgery with amniotic membrane transplantation then following the simplifron surgery here again the simplifron is released from the attachments and then we place the amniotic membrane over the defective part and then reform the fornix coming to corneal ulcers that is especially the non healing corneal ulcer so how you treat depends upon whether it's just a superficial corneal ulcer or deep corneal ulcer if it is superficial corneal ulcer the treatment is similar to that of the ped just scrape the corneal epithelium and place the amniotic membrane over that and if it is deep then the defect which is there in the cornea is stuffed with the amniotic membrane first and then a layer of the amniotic membrane is placed over the corneal ulcer moving on to the next indication where there is limbal stem cell deficiency the causes are steven johnson syndrome toxic epidermal necrolysis contact lens induced keratopathy aniridia multiple limbal surgeries ocular cicatricial pemphigus so here the amniotic membrane transplantation is done along with the limbal stem cell transplantation so what is the procedure again so this is the deceased cornea and the conjunctiva here you have to replace the limbal stem cells and also cover the defective cornea with the amniotic membrane so what we do first we do again 360 degree peritomy release if there is any simplifron have a base clear of up to 5 to 7 mm release if there is any fibrosis 
then from the donor or from the cadaveric eyeball we take the strip of limbal stem cells okay so how you take it from the donor there are two methods like so from the donor or the cadaver we take a corneoscleral ring okay we remove the central 8 millimeters of the corneal button so now this part is removed and now we are left with only a strip of cornea and the strip of sclera and then this is placed in a medium and then scrape of the endothelium and the deeper part of the stroma so we are left with the epithelium and the superficial stroma of the donor tissue then this whole thing is placed over the recipient's uh, bed and then it is sutured followed by the amniotic membrane transplantation over this or the one more method is if you are taking from the same person so this is the cornea then you just mark how much ever limbal transplantation you want and then superficially dissect the cornea here and dissect the conjunctiva here and then take this strip and place it over wherever it is required followed by the amniotic membrane covering all this area so this is uh, in brief about the procedure of amniotic membrane transplantation with the limbal stem cell transplantation so we have uh, some more uses of the amniotic membrane like in cases of leaking filtering blep following trap in case of entropian surgery as an alternative to the mucous membrane you can use the amniotic membrane in case of ocular surface disorders like chemical or the thermal injuries and you can also use it to decrease scarring after the exam or laser so in this video i have covered about how we harvest the amniotic membrane there are three procedures what are the advantages of freezing and freeze drying what are the different scenarios where we need amniotic membrane transplantation what are the exact indications for the amniotic membrane transplantation and briefly about the procedure of amniotic membrane transplantation so hope this video on amniotic membrane transplantation is helpful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my videos thank you so much